Picking up where we left off on Lesson 5 from Photoshop Classroom in a Book, page 124, we are going to start with this columns photo. Now, as you can see, these columns look like they're bowed out. We can probably imagine that they're not in real life, but um, this happens whenever you're using a wide-angle lens and you're really close to your subject a lot of times. So our goal is to get rid of this bulge or pucker. All right, so this is what we're going to end up with, roughly. And this is what we're starting with. All right, so I'm going to close this in file and I'm going to rename the start file. I've already done this once. So I'm just going to save over what I did before. All right, so the first thing you're going to do once you've saved it, obviously, is use, uh, you're going to go to your filter menu and you're going to choose lens correction. Um, it's right here, or you can shift control R. And once you get to lens correction, um, you want to look. You want this alignment grid to show up. So the grid helps you to make sure or see when your lines are straight. So for instance, um, if you're looking at this column right here, uh, if you compare where the grid line is at the very bottom of it, to, and then to the middle, and then at the top, you can see that it bulges out, and that'll help us get this lined up straight. So in the correction area of the autocorrect tab over here. Oh, sorry. Um, if your grid does not show up, uh, the check mark, the checkbox for it's right here. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that. Okay, so make sure your show grid is is lit up. Um, in the auto correct section, make sure that auto scale image is checked. Okay, and make sure that edge says transparency. Okay, we'll leave all that the way it is, and then go to custom. Now, your book says that um, whenever you get here, we're going to remove distortion. Uh, and you can drag this up to around 52, and as I drag this, you can see that it straightens up a pretty good bit. All right, and that looks looks really way better. Okay, now that's one way you can do it. And when you get where you want, press enter, and it you know saves your changes. And if you compare this grid line to from top to bottom in the middle, it's you know it's a lot better. I don't think it's perfect still, but it's a lot better. Okay. Um, Another way that you could do this is if you grab this tool right here, this remove distortion tool, um, and you click and you drag up, you can pretty much just drag it up until it gets to where you think it looks good or until it's till it looks right. Um, I, for the purposes of this assignment, I'm going to just put 52 here just because that's what the book says. But um, in the real world, using this, you you know do it until it looks right to you because a lot of this is up to your judgment, as I've said before. All right, so once you get that set up the way it needs to be, you're going to just say OK. And now your picture looks tremendously better. OK, and you can zoom out, zoom back in, you know, check it out. Once you're finished, just save, control S. I'm going to do that, say OK. And that's pretty much all you have to do for that picture. Really simple. This one is a little bit different. Here we're looking at some depth of field issues. And what I mean by that, whenever you take a picture, it, your camera is going to focus on something. Now in this version, if you have, you look, we have two layers. Um, the first layer is called beach. And if you look, the, the beach and the, the sand, and all you know, the house, all this stuff is, is more in focus. Um, if I turn that layer off, since it's on top, and I look at the second layer, all that is out of focus and blurry, and the glass itself is in focus, okay? And what we're going to do is put the focused portion of each of those two photos together, um, and we're going to end up with something that looks kind of like this. So you can see that the beach is in focus and the glass is in focus. All right, so what the what, there's a couple different things that we're going to have to do. First of all, if you look at the way that, whenever I turn the beach layer back on, you can see grab my move tool, you can see that these two layers aren't lined up perfectly. Okay, you can tell that this rail is, is out of line and things like that. So the first thing that we want to do once we file save as and rename this instead of saving over our original, like I almost just did, okay, now the next thing you want to do after you do that, um, in your layers panel, nope, sorry, I already talked about that. Um, I want you to shift click for both shift or click on one and then shift hold down your shift key and click on the other um, and that'll select both of them so if you have one layer selected hold down the shift key click the other one and you'll see that they're both lit up okay so that's how we select multiple layers um, you can also control click I believe yeah 
Um, if you have multiple layers, like say I wanted to select all three layers, if I just click the top one and hold shift and then click the last one, it's going to highlight everything. If you do control, it's only going to highlight the ones you actually click on. Okay. All right, so once you've selected those two layers, you're going to go to the edit menu and auto align layers. And what this is going to do is automatically line up these two layers. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And for the purposes of what we're doing, we're just going to use auto. And we want to make sure that, let's see, neither vignette removal nor geometric distortion is selected, meaning that those both should be there. Probably, I think it's um, automatically checked whenever you first do this. We're going to uncheck all that, okay? And leave it on auto and say okay. And give it a second to do its magic. And now you can tell that these layers are, are lined up perfectly, okay? So that's one step. The next thing we're going to do, with both layers still selected, which they are, you're going to stack, the, you know, we're going to pull parts of each image and put together. All right, so <clears throat> making sure that both are still selected, you're going to go to the edit menu again, and this time you're going to auto blend. Instead of auto align, our layers are aligned, we're going to blend the layers. So auto blend. Um, this time we want to make sure to stack images. This is not a panorama, okay? So we don't have pictures beside one another. We're going to stack them. Um, and we want to make sure that seamless tones and colors are selected. <clears throat> and we want to make sure that content aware fill transparent areas is not selected, okay? So this should be selected. This is not. And we're going to say okay. And you're going to let it work again. And after, you'll notice that you have a mask on each of these. I know we don't like masks, but I, I want you to see that masks are actually pretty helpful. So on the beach picture, you see that there's a mask that, hold on. Okay, actually, I'll just show you this way. Okay, so um, on the by turning off the, the beach layer, you can see on the glass layer, it only kept the glass and this board, okay? And if I turn on the beach layer and turn off glass, you can see that it kept um, just the beach in the house, most of the house anyway. But this thing is pretty smart. It's pretty, um, pretty capable of figuring out what to do and what not to do. So I'm going to go back just to show you the difference that made. So this is where we auto aligned, which just lined them up. And then this is where we blended. And you can see that everything is in focus and it looks a whole lot better. All right, so once you've gotten that far, you're just going to click the save button on your keyboard and or control S and close that and you're good to go. And this is our end file. This is the one I just did and you see it's pretty much identical. All right, last one that we're actually going to do for lesson five. And this is using the content aware move tool. I know we worked with this some last week. Um, so we're just going to, we're going to use this really quickly. So uh, what I've got my ducks here. Now this is a really blurry picture. I'm really shocked that they're using this picture, but um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move this little duck up here with his friends so he's not quite so far behind. Uh, so this is our start file. This is the end. Before we start with our ducks, we're going to file, save as, save this as your name. Again, I've already done this one once. Uh, I didn't save it yet. That's okay. So I'm just going to replace start with my name. Okay. All right, so your content aware move tool um, is actually hidden behind, or it's in the same group with your um, with your red eye. Your red eye is probably the last thing that's up since we were working on this project, uh, using this tool for this project a while back. So it's behind spot healing brush, patch tool, whatever you're seeing. Um, and it's the content aware move tool. Okay, and you use this similar in a similar way to the patch tool. And why I say that is because you're going to click and drag around whatever it is that you're trying to move. Um, make sure the two lines meet at the end. And once you've selected your subject, you're just going to click it and drag it. And now, like right now, it looks like there's two of them. But whenever you press enter, it will actually move it and replace it. Use the content aware to replace where the duck was. Okay, so now you can control D to deselect. And now the duck is keeping up with his friends. I actually moved them a little further forward than what they did, but um, either way, the same same principle applies. Okay, so that's really, really super simple. Nothing to it. Um, now, the very last, if you look on page, 
134. Um, there is a project that requires a tool that we just simply do not have. I mean, we we would have it, but our version, our computers are not quite up to par to run um, this portion of the Photoshop software. So, uh, what you're supposed to do is um, this is the original picture. You see the train as a separate layer. It's a smart object um, on this document, and you're supposed to make it sit on the track and it's supposed to look like it's coming to you from an angle and that kind of thing but we do not have the tool that they want you to use to do this so um, it tells you once you've saved it and I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about you're supposed to go to the edit menu and use perspective warp but if you look at this it is completely grayed out meaning that we can't use it so don't worry about the train picture um, but I do expect you to have the the first one the red eye girl I'm trying to flip back through these books and this book and see what else I'm missing you should have the the red eye you should have the bird the egret however you say that um, the panorama of the like the water with the cityscape behind it you should have the columns and you should have the glass and the beach and then you should have the ducks um, so you're going to turn in several different files for this project or for lesson five but um, everything it shouldn't take you super long to to get them knocked out so good luck and have fun